We're going to talk about parenting on this depraved and debaucherous and emotionally immature parenting and how it affects our adult lives. We already know that parents are not doing that well when it comes to raising their kids in some cases because, first of all, it's not even so much where it comes to parenting as it is how much it is that the parents are together in a cohesive unit as a team raising the kids, raising them right, giving proper and definitive role models of how a man or a woman or a dominant or a submissive person is supposed to be. I mean, that's the point, you know, masculine or feminine. You want to see those roles in real place. And if both people are very much emotionally and mentally healthy and they are doing the right thing to raise their kids right and raise them so that they are not, you know, when they grow up, that they'll make the right decisions and they'll do the right things for themselves. That's all those things that you want to think about. But it always comes down to parenting for everybody. There's a reason certain people that just turn out bad. That they have issues where, for whatever reason, sometimes there's just extenuating circumstances that just are beyond our control. But for the most part, you have to realize that there are those parents that were not ready to be parents. And you would think that even with young women that are going to become parents, yeah, they might not be ready for it. Plus, the connection where they're going to have the maturity of a parent that's more like an aunt or a mother or somebody else taking care of the kids instead of you. There's that part. So this story talks about four types of emotionally immature parents, their long-term effects. It's seen with intergenerational trauma conditioned to maintain from one generation to the next. And parents with dysregulated emotions may be experiencing their own unhealed attachment trauma. I can't tell you how many times I've heard about women that because of the, you know, the resentment and anger they might have from past relationships that unfair to them, but then they're left to a point of being the single mom and they're, Sometimes it's uncontrollable for them not to take out their own frustration on their kids. It's not fair, but you can see that. And then also adults who have emotionally negligent parents also have a difficulty expressing vulnerable emotions or maybe detached or distant, right? Because if you're coming out of a dysfunctional family or a family that was just not very loving, then that also affects you growing up. It's like everything comes down to your parents. Now, you still have to be following, behaving, learning, being mentored, follow what's being said and go forward. Now, maybe some things they might do or might say, maybe they're not so understanding. Maybe it's way too, too strict and way too, for whatever reason, there's thoughts, beliefs in the culture that they don't match with you or you're not into because of everything else. So they talk about now that a child may observe their, their parent cannot maintain emotional closeness. They may pull toward their child or connection for one minute and push away. They may struggle in providing the child's emotional or physical needs so that the child becomes parentified and a role reversal. Or a parent may try to be their child's friend and may come off irresponsible or concerned about getting their own needs met. Right. There are some men and women that are parents. They don't want to be the parent. They want to be the best friend. They don't want to be the bad person. They don't want to be the one that has to say, okay, do this, do that. So when a parent is emotionally immature, they often are parenting from a place of their own attachment trauma, early abuse, or rejecting parents. And some of these emotionally immature parents don't evolve past their own childlike needs or self-centeredness. They, because of themselves, were abused or neglected in their childhood. So you have to understand that parenting, this kind of parenting can affect a person later in their adult life. It helps to recognize that unresolved trauma is what perpetuates from one generation to the next. Yeah, this is why you gotta, you know, if you gotta go to therapy, and un, you know, to you don't want to let what has happened to you affect other people. You don't want it to affect you when you start making changes about yourself that makes you feel worse about yourself. You gotta be able to just come out of it. If there's a way to do it, you gotta give it a chance. So there's red flags for an emotionally immature parent: inconsistent or non-existent boundaries. Trying to be the party parent or blur the lines between friend and parent. The parenting style is often based on their own unmet needs for love and attention. They might ignore or neglect their child's needs for their own needs. And those that live in the moment that include living beyond their financial means. Some are mental health issues and diagnoses. Dismissive or avoidant of the child's feelings. Drug or alcohol addictions or compulsive behaviors. 
being excessively needy or rigid and inflexible with rules or boundaries, which prevents the child's autonomy. And I'll tell you, that's part of the, you know, a lot of religions are like that. I don't want to say which ones, but there are. There's four types. One is driven and controlling. Helicopter parents demand excellence and perfection of their children. High, often unrealistic demands on themselves and their children. And these parents may parent with excessive anger from a punitive approach. I might work in a Chinese family in you know mainland China, but that shouldn't happen here. And these kids will usually become perfectionists, overachievers, and highly critical of themselves, struggle with compulsive behaviors such as workaholism, shopaholism, and many ways of self numbing to feel worthy. Romantic relationships, they might demand perfection of their partner and minimize relational, relational problems by staying overly busy or intellectualizing instead of allowing themselves to feel their emotions, like overthinking. I know that. Number two, emotional or non-emotional. They can go from one extreme to the other. May appear helpless or needy. The other end of the spectrum, they can appear distant, cynical, dismissive, or cold to their children. And when they become adults, these children are anxious, depressed, and emotionally dysregulated. They might have their own anger problems. They may feel, this, uh, may feel disconnected from their emotions, especially their vulnerabilities. And then rejecting is next. Number three is rejecting. Typically dismissive and avoidant. They may push away, prefer to spend their time alone, or may not want to be bothered with parenting or emotions. And when these children, you know, they were rejecting themselves, grew up fending for themselves. And if they interact with their children, they might be demanding or verbally abusive. And when they're growing up, these kids, they'll have limited empathy for other people's needs, may vacillate between wanting connection and pushing it away, and may appear selfish or self-centered, and be also an emotionally rejecting parent themselves. Four, negligent or passive. And that's parents who are emotionally or physically negligent or passive avoid confrontation. Easy to get along with. They think, but negligent or passive lack healthy and consistent boundaries. They want to be the cool parent or the child's friend. And parenting is reduced to what the parent wants with less consideration of what their child needs. And those kids, they usually are emotionally or physically negligent. They have higher risk of anxiety, depression, or mental health diagnoses. Parents that get this, they also they actually do get like an idea of where it works. I still remember a couple I had when I was driving Uber about how they had all their kids are, you know, they're doing really well, but it's like they wanted to do their own thing. One, you know, in the doc, in, in the medical field, the other person is like an engineering field and all this. And the one thing they always said was, they live in a very rich, affluent neighborhood. And then all the kids wanted to go hang out at their house because the mother and father there, they's like, yeah, come on over, hang out with us. We'll grab some pizza, watch some movies, you know, pool party, whatever. Because the thing was, is that, those parents knew, and listen, they both run their own business, their contract, like they work a contracting business. And I just listened to them. I was like, wow, you know, when they went out, you know, for one night, because they, like everybody was out, they were out, you know, grab some dinner, grab some drinks, chill, have a night out, have a date night. And they always talk about the fact that, you know, they know what their kids are doing because their kids know they can bring their friends over. They can, you know, have a good time, enjoy themselves. And it's like, okay. Like there's still things where like, okay, not on a school night. And if you got to take care of things, make sure that you get everything else done. You're responsible and accountable for what you got to do. You take care of what you got to do around the house and you're good to people. And like you get to see who they're with and they're not out and about where you can't like notice, but it's like, you don't want to make it where they have to be at the house. They should want to be at the house. Like your house is warm, hospitable, friendly, engaging, inviting. And that's why those other kids that are, Probably under these one of these uh, areas of having emotionally immature parents, they'll they'll reach out to those parents of other kids because they'll realize how good they got it. It's a very interesting thing because if you have emotionally immature parents, not only will you have all these emotional trauma traumatic problems, you'll probably become depraved and debaucherous.